My God, I want to be a saint, but I feel so helpless. Hello, my dear. My queen! My queen! Oh, Therese. Therese, why would you say such a thing? Because I want you to go to heaven. And you said we must die to get there. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies. The day of Mama's death, I didn't cry, and I didn't speak to anyone about my feelings. I looked and listened in silence. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now and at the hour of our death, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now and at the hour of our death, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. There you are, my dear. Come. Hail Mary, full of grace, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus.
After Mama's death, Earth seemed a sad place, and I dreamed of heaven. But when I compared myself to the saints, I realized that the distance between them and me was the same that exists between a mountain and an obscure grain of sand. My queen! Therese! A fish! You're welcome, sister. We will meet you in the parlor. Uh, yes, sister. Oh, Monsieur Martin, you spoil us. Really, you do. Mother, you give us far more than we could ever repay. Thank you for your prayers. And your girls are growing up. I recognize Pauline, Marie, Leonie, Celine, and this big girl can't be Therese. Yes, Mother. Oh! oh no. I'll get it, sisters. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. My child, don't worry. Here, I have a holy card for you. Oh, thank you, Mother. dream. Well, I've committed so many terrible sins, Papa. You? Mm -hmm. What are these terrible sins, little one? You really want me to tell you? Of course. Well, I, I took the biggest piece of cake after dinner last night. I see. Is there anything else? Yes. Well, much more, Papa. I, I didn't pick up my clothes Marie told me to. I, I just kept reading this awful novel. I think God is punishing me. I have such evil thoughts. Now listen to me, Therese. Don't take your scruples too seriously. Confess them and forget them. Jesus forgives you. I think he may even be laughing at you a little bit. Maybe you're right. Therese. My darling, I let you sleep as long as I could, but you have to get ready now. Why do I have to go? I hate school. Sister Scholastica. She's an ugly old witch, and I wish she would die. Don't say that. Don't ever say that. Oh, sister special pet. You think you're so pious and good with your little baby curls. Well, I'll tell you what I think of you. You're a spoiled princess, and no one can abide to be around you, except perhaps your slave family. It's not true. You take it back. It is true. Everyone is laughing at you. The natural law is that law which God has written on the heart of man. In other words, it's the means by which we discern what is good and what is evil. Now, who can tell me the name of the other law God has given to us? Yes, Therese. 
Positive divine law? Very good. And the two divisions of positive divine law are? Yes. The old and new law? That is correct. I must ask all of you, except Therese Martin, to go home tonight and write a one-page paper on the difference between divine law and natural law. Let us pray. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In nomine Patris, Filii, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Class is dismissed. Thank you so much. It must be hard to be so perfect. is to be here all together. Um, Papa, I would have loved to see you dance with Mama. What a lovely couple you must have made. Ah, but we never danced. Your mother and I. We were too pious, I suppose. I wish I would have danced with her. She was such a graceful lady. Yes. Very, very graceful. Papa, have you been thinking? You said you'd think about it. Thinking, my dear. Papa, the school. Don't make me go back there, Papa. But my child, you have to go to school. How will you learn? Pauline can teach me at home. I promise I'll study so hard, Papa. Pauline, are you sure you want to try? It will be fun. And I know she'd be happier. And learn more, too. Well, all right. <laughs> Just as an experiment, till the end of the year. Thank you, Papa. Thank you. <laughs> Bible verses. How's that coming along? Mm. I've practiced it about 50 times. I think I have it. Mark 10, verses 13 through 16. And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. And the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. Beautiful. Do I win the prize? <laughs> you win the prize. <laughs> Pauline, your shell purse! <gasps> Are you sure? I'm sure. You've loved it so, now it's yours. Oh, thank you, thank you. You are the most wonderful sister in the world. Oh. No, you are. <laughs> However, I have corrected your algebra lesson. No, 
How did I do? Too wrong. Not bad, Professor. Papa, did you hear that? Only too wrong. Well done. Keep up the good work. Try not to enjoy yourselves too much, you two. Oh, no. We're very serious. <laughs> I'm sure you are. Back to work, girls. Do you want to stay here with me and work on the next chapter? Or would you like to go upstairs where you won't be disturbed? Oh, I want to stay here with you. I might get swallowed by a quadratic equation. <laughs> then I'd need you to grab my arm and pull me back to the surface. Mm, well, you just cry out if you feel the jaws closing in on you, and I'll rescue you. Oh, Mama, I love you so much. Not rest. What's on your mind? I'm thinking about our faraway desert place where we will always be together. I have to finish it by Thursday and I've only done the background. Will you help me? You drop flowers so perfectly. Well, if you really want me to, I'll try. Pauline, where have you been? I went by the monastery and brought some fresh bread to the nuns. Oh. How is your picture coming along, Celine? Well, I haven't gotten very far. I've only painted the background. I'm trying to make it look like a spring day. It's very idyllic and pastoral. Oh, you're getting it. The colors are good. But what about the perspective on the cottage? Now, if you extend the roof line here like this, you see? Oh, that makes it more a part of the landscape? Oh, that's much better. And maybe... Oh, Mother dearest, let me be always in the arms of your son, Jesus. Like a little child. Eventually, you'll have to tell her. I know. Oh, I don't know why I keep putting it off. She's older now. I think she'll be fine. I suppose. But she will take my leaving hard. What did Mother Marie de Gonzague say? There was no reason to delay my entrance. She set the date of October 2nd. So soon? Pauline, I'm jealous. Found our desert place. You found it. Beautiful desert. Filled with roses. Where Jesus waits for me. All I want is to be alone with him. I'm entering Carmel next month, Therese. You're not going to wait for me. No. There really is such a place. Yes, my darling.
lost to me. Selim, good day. Goodbye, Papa. Leonie, God bless you. Good day, Papa. Now that Pauline had left me, I saw what life was. Nothing but a continual suffering and separation. It wasn't long before my mind became sick. From everything she writes, she seems so happy. Why, I don't think she misses us at all. It will be good to see her, though. Oh, the fruit. Papa, did you pack it? Don't worry. It's in the front of the carriage. Therese, are you all right? It's just my head. It, it keeps pounding and pounding. Aren't you coming? I'll just wait in the carriage. Are you sure? Pauline will be so disappointed. I can't. Just let me rest for a while. I'll feel better. Let her rest, Celine. My little queen. Are you better, my child? Yes, Papa. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Therese, it's all right. Pauline understood. How was she? How does she look? She looked happy and healthy. She misses you very much. Papa, what was it she said about the food? Let me see. That she missed Victoire's roast chicken, but other than that, she was feasting on bread and cheese. <laughs> well, I doubt if she's feasting, but she didn't seem to be starving. <laughs> when I saw her there in her habit, she looked so much older. She reminded me of your dear mother. For two full weeks, I was delirious. And it seemed as if I wouldn't recover. Holy Virgin, please. Please heal my little. anything like it that has lasted so long.
I'm hungry. I'm sure I want to go in. Hello, Mama. You're looking very thin, my dear. They told me you'd fully recovered, but you need to rest and take care of yourself. I'm fine. Really, I am. I just wish everyone would stop making such a fuss. All right. So, how are your struggles with quadratic equations coming along? It's hard. I'm persevering. My little hermit. The desert is here, isn't it, Pauline? Where I will meet my beloved. Yes. He is here waiting. And I will come to him. Write to me, girls, and tell me all your news. It wasn't long before two more of my sisters left home. Marie to enter Carmel. Be good. God bless you. Yes, God bless you. And Leonie to become a poor Claire nun. I love you both very much. From we our happy and numerous family, there remained only the two youngest children. I don't understand why everyone has to leave. That's what children do. They leave you in the end. Don't cry, my child. The doves must fly from the nest. You and Celine will also fly away someday. God would have to work a little miracle for me to grow up. And he did this on an unforgettable Christmas Eve. On that night, I received the grace of leaving my childhood. Well, that was a beautiful mass. But I must admit, that it's not my style to stay up till 2 a.m. I'm ready for bed. Celine, there's nothing in the slippers. Oh, that's right, the slippers. Oh. Go upstairs so that Father Christmas may bring you the presents. But hurry, it's late. Well, thank God this is the last year. She's getting a bit old.
In an instant, I grew up. I felt the need to forget myself and to please others. Therese? What's wrong? Selene, I'm no longer the same. I've decided not to cry. Merry Christmas, Celine. I felt myself consumed with a thirst for souls. I burned with the desire to snatch the souls of great sinners from the eternal flames. I heard the news of a terrible murderer who had been condemned to death. It seemed certain that he would die without repentance. I wanted at all costs to save his soul. <laughs> oh Lord, I am sure you will pardon poor unfortunate Pranzini. I would believe this even if he went to his death without any signs of repentance or without having gone to confession. I am absolutely confident in your mercy, O oh Jesus. But I beg you for a sign of repentance just for my own consolation. Because, Lord, he is my first child. Father, bring me the crucifix. <laughs> Pray for me when I'm dead. My son, God will never abandon you. What am I going to do? You're going to follow your heart. He'll think it's because of Pauline. But it's not, is it? Besides, he won't be alone. I'll stay with him. No need to worry.
What's the matter, my little queen? Tell me. I don't want to hurt you, Papa. Tell me. Don't be afraid. Papa. I have to fly away. You're awfully young to be making such a serious decision. Perhaps in a few years, when you're older, you can... No, Papa, now. Jesus is calling me to the monastery now. I cannot resist his love any longer. All I want in life is what makes you happy and is pleasing to God. Look at this little flower. Think how much God must love it to bring it into being and to keep it alive in the moss. See, it still has its roots. Maybe it's destined now to live on in another soil more fertile than the moss. Oh, Papa, thank you. Let's go ask the bishop. And if he's opposed, ask the pope. <laughs> ah, Monsieur Martin. So glad to see you. Please, do sit. <laughs> what can I do for you, my child? Your Grace, I ask your permission to enter Carmelite immediately. Jesus is calling me, and I cannot resist his love any longer. How old are you, my little daughter? I'm 15 years old, Your Grace. My, my, you look so very grown up. Yes, she put her hair up for you. <laughs> well, is that so? Have you desired to enter Carmel for a long time? Yes, Bishop, a very long time. Well, Monsieur Martin, do not fear. I am on your side against your daughter's whim. I assure your grace, this is no childish whim. I am convinced that God is calling her. And it's a very unusual request. I shall have to get the approval of the Monastery Superior before I can consider it. <laughs> He's already said no. <laughs> uh, I'll speak to him again and see what I can do. Thank you, Your Grace. Don't worry. It'll be fine. When we arrived in Rome, I begged Jesus for a miracle. I prayed that the Pope would grant my request. But when the day finally came, they told us that it was forbidden to speak to the Holy Father.
Most Holy Father, I have a great favor to ask of you. In honor of your jubilee, permit me to enter Carmel at the age of 15. I don't think I understand. Holy Father, this is a, this is a child who wants to enter Carmel at the age of 15. The superiors are considering the matter at the moment. Do what the superiors tell you. Holy Father, if you say yes, everyone will agree. Mademoiselle Martin, that is quite enough. There, there. You will enter, if God wills it. But Holy Father... After this great disappointment, sadness filled my soul. Yet I never gave up hope that God would fulfill my desires. Hello. Good day. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Therese, it's for you, the Bishop Seal. Come on. Open it. Dear Mademoiselle Montan, I am happy to inform you that after meeting with the Superior of Carmel, I have decided to permit you to enter the Lycée of Carmel at the unusual young age of 15. <laughs> However, because of the extraordinary circumstances of your situation, your entrance is to be delayed for three months until after Lent of this year. At first, I didn't know how I could bear the next three months. But I was so grateful to God that I gave myself up to a life of sacrifice. This is not to say that I performed great deeds. My sacrifices consisted in giving up my will in little things that no one noticed. And I cannot express how much this waiting left me with sweet memories. Papa, I love you so. You know how happy I am, and yet my heart is breaking to leave you. This life is so brief, my dear. We will be together for all eternity in such a short time. Go on, my queen. Go 
with my blessing. I am here forever and ever. It is extremely important to clean the choir carefully. I don't want to see a speck of dust when you are through. Yes, sister, I'll do my very best. Mm, yes, well, we'll see. I know you would have preferred to be with your sisters, but mother feels that you will be the most use here with me. Sister Augustine, I can't think of anywhere else that I'd rather be. 
Get to work. I'll be back in a few minutes. to break that vase. And then, to hide your mistake? I must say, I'm a bit surprised. But, sister, I... Yes, sister. I'll try to be more careful next time. This little victory over my will cost me very much. I discovered that when I did my duty without excuses, no one noticed. But any mistakes showed up immediately. But the English then attacked and the French fell back. Think nothing of striking them, cried Joan. Their defeat lies in your hands. At the Bay of the Moat, Joan still fought on. An entire enemy troop fell upon her. Surrender, they cried. I have sworn and given my faith to another, answered the brave girl. And I will keep my vow to him. But her resistance was in vain. Pulled by her flowing garments, she was dragged from her horse and captured. It wasn't long after my entrance that our dear Papa's health began to decline. We lost him little by little. His mind, always so clear and bright, became clouded and dark. Now, you take the paddle and you hit the cloth hard like this. Yes, sister. I'd like to see you try it now. No. Hard. Like this. How's that? That would be the idea. My efforts to achieve perfection were met with more thorns than roses. Pleasing God and the other sisters was difficult. I knew I was a very little soul who could offer only very little things to God. And I wondered if this was enough.
cleaned and swept by a child of 15. Sister, clean that away and be more careful in the future. I found him lying on the floor. That's the way my poor papa died. And me, no more than five years old. I had to grow up fast, I can tell you. No coddling or spoiling for me. I had never for a moment questioned my vocation. But suddenly, on the eve of my final vows, I was overcome by fear and doubt. Mother! Mother! I must speak to you. It's urgent. Do you have a moment? Why, yes, certainly, my child. What is it? What's the matter? I see it so clearly now. I, I can't avoid the truth any longer. Tell me what has happened. I've suddenly realized that I have no vocation. I need to return to the world, not stay here in Carmel and do my own well. Besides, I'm no good at this life. All I do is fail at every task I attempt. <laughs> oh, my dear child. God has not brought you here to take away your vocation. Tomorrow is the day of your final profession. Are you happy here, my child? You may leave if you wish. But do you want to stay? I find the life difficult, but my heart has expanded here. Then let me tell you what I think. You, my dear, are a very simple soul. And as you grow in love, you will become even more simple. The closer you approach to God, the simpler you will become. I don't need to grow up. I, I need to become more and more little and weak. Now go and prepare for your profession. I remember her hot chocolate. Mm -hmm. mm. Sister Augustine, your altar cloths are so exquisite. 
How do you make such tiny stitches? Well, I, I've had years of practice. Needlework takes a great deal of patience and skill. I can certainly see that. Not everyone can do it. I'm sure. But I was wondering if, if you would teach me. You? If you had time. Well, I, I suppose I could show you some beginning stitches. Thank you, sister. I would love that. Whoever is a little one, let him come to me. In these words of scripture, I found at last my little way to become a saint. It's ten minutes to six. I need someone to take me into the refectory for dinner. Well, sister, let me help you. I have no need to climb to the height of the great saints. Here, sister. But I just have to be myself, a little child. Now, be careful. Yes, sister. Gently, gently, you're pulling on me. Sorry, sister. Um, let me try this. <clears throat> That's too rough. Oh. Give me your arm. I'm not made of wood, you know. But come on, let's go. One winter night, as I performed my ordinary duties, I heard music playing and imagined a ballroom filled with elegantly dressed young ladies conversing together and conferring upon each other all sorts of compliments and other worldly remarks. Stop! You're going too fast. I have to catch my breath. I'll be more gentle, sister. But the music I heard playing was the music in my heart. And I would not have exchanged ten minutes of humble charity to enjoy a thousand years of worldly dances or feasts. Well, what in the world are you staring at? Get moving, child. Sorry, sister. That night, I felt such love that I could not possibly have done better had I been guiding Jesus himself. I thank you, Sister Therese. Thank you, my child. You are so good to this old woman. looking all over for you. Sister, it's so good to see you. Could you help me lift this? Sister Vincent needs these in the kitchen. <coughs> you certainly don't seem to have much stamina. What would I have done if you hadn't come along? What attracts you so much towards me? Every time I look at you, I see you smile. I'm smiling because I'm, I'm happy to see you.
Can he hear us? I'm not sure. I keep talking to him. And sometimes he squeezes my hand. Oh, Celine, what a burden for you. used to sit in the garden in the evening. Mama would work her lace and you would take care of your flowers while we all played. Oh, I wish we were all together again. I should go. He's very tired. I'll bring him back soon. It's getting very difficult. He seems to go downhill every day. Sully, take care of your health, my dear. Goodbye, Papa. Goodbye, dear Papa. I love you. Must be a ton. Let me help you with it. She's not too heavy for me. After Papa's death, my dear sister Celine was free to enter Carmel as she had so long desired. What a joy it was for me to again live under the same roof and to share the joys and pains of my childhood companion. Ten sisters in your bourgeois ways. You should all be getting to work right now instead of fiddling with his useless play acting. Wait until you see what we have planned for tonight. That looks so realistic. I can't wait for you to see the picture developed. We better hurry if we're going to be ready by 7.30. We want to surprise Mother. She doesn't suspect a thing. One more picture with the actress and author, please. The rest of you can go ahead. You look spectacular. One more. More to the left. That's much better. Uh, uh, uh. Therese! Are you all right? It must have been the smoke. I'm all right. Oh, my Jesus. What is your answer to all my follies? 
Is there a soul more little, more powerless than mine? All are not apostles, are they? All are not prophets, are they? All are not teachers, are they? All do not have the gift of healing, do they? Yet earnestly desire the greater gifts, and I will show you a more excellent way. But now abide faith, hope, and love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Finally, I have rest. I understand that the body of Christ has a heart, and that this heart is burning with love. Yes, in the heart of the church, my mother, I shall be love, thus I shall be everything, and thus my dream will be realized. Try to rest, my dear. <coughs> How long has this been going on? Well, for the past several months, I must admit, she has had a cough, but, Doctor, I had no idea it was serious. Sister Pauline, what we have here is a far advanced case of tuberculosis. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God, have mercy. I had no idea. My beloved. Thank you, Doctor. I'm going to die, Mama. Jesus has permitted my soul to be invaded by a thick darkness. The thought of heaven, once so sweet to me, has become nothing but a torment. Every 
everything I longed for has disappeared. All that lies before me is death and nothingness. Now that I can no longer eat, I have a desire for all sorts of things. For example, a chocolate eclair. <laughs> I didn't expect to suffer like this. <laughs> I'm suffering like a little child. see you again and your heart will rejoice and no one will take this joy from you you'll see I will send down a shower of roses love and mercy free you from all your sins may the Lord who saves you who loves you raise you up to eternal life amen
very good. <laughs> My God will never leave me, I'm sure. He has never abandoned me. <laughs> yes. My God will never abandon me. <laughs> oh, Lord. My God. Everything you will. Have pity on me. Yes, my poor little one. It's the agony. I love him. My mission is about to begin. My mission of making others love God as I love Him. My heaven will be spent on earth up until the end of the world. Yes, I want to spend my heaven in doing good on earth. 